Hey everybody. So today I want to talk to you about my Neon Day Geckos, which are the Falsuma Clemeri. First things first, I want to talk a little bit about the lizard itself. It's a lizard that, it's a small gecko, uh, day gecko, so it's diurnal, typically active during the day. They only get to be about three and a half to four inches in length. In captivity, these guys live about 10 years. They are endangered. They're from Madagascar, the northwest section of Madagascar. If you look at my setup here, I do have a Zoomed combination light, which has got the LED plant light and a 12 inch UVB in there. I use the 5.0 T5HO. In the back, I've got a small halogen heat lamp. It's either a 25 or a 50 watt halogen bulb. I do run a misting system on this enclosure. I do mist three times a day or once is shortly after the lights go out. Now, as far as keeping these, these little guys together, they seem to do really well in a family unit. I started off with one male and two females. And currently I have nine day geckos in here total right now, ranging from three full adults to six babies that are anywhere from about a month old up to about two and a half months old. Now, as far as my setup, I keep them in an 1818-24 Exoterra, set up bioactive with uh, Josh's Frogs bio bedding, the tropical. And then the other thing I've done is I've been pulling out all the styrofoam backings out of the Exoterras. One, because things can get behind them, small insects, lizards, things like that. I don't I don't care for that, but I also don't like the look of them or the sound that the, the animals make when climbing all over them. Something like a, a nail on a chalkboard to me. I've been replacing the backgrounds with cork bark. So it makes a little bit thick. It's probably an inch, inch and a quarter thick. Nice flat pieces. You have to trim, you can get them in a 18 by 24 inch piece, but you have to trim them down just a little bit. I typically cut off probably two or three inches off the bottom so that it's not all the way down into the, the soil. So it the soil pretty much just comes up to the bottom of it. Uh, this helps kind of keep the, the cork bark from wicking the water up out of the dirt. The other thing I did is with a hot glue gun, sometimes there are some small holes or pits within that cork bark background. So I'll fill that with hot glue and then take some terrarium moss, which is like a nice little green moss that just kind of fluffy but dry and stick that to the hot glue. And it creates a nice looking background. Now, I did use two different sizes of the bamboo here. I've got one inch. And then I also have, I think it's like three eighths or three sixteenths, somewhere around there, like around a quarter inch, give or take. Um, I'll put links in below of what I've used. The other thing I've done is I've up high is I've provided them with tubes, plants, and how I've set this up bioactive. This is a philodendron, this, this big plant in here, which I believe is called a lickety split. It's a philodendron that rather than growing on the long stalks and snaking up and then splitting off, this one tends to grow in just a clump. It's getting to the point where I've got to trim a couple leaves off of it because they grow right up to the top and just block all the light. A couple of the other plants I've got in here, I've got, I think it's another philodendron, at least it kind of resembles one, which is down right here, but I don't know what it is. I, I put it in there. I probably had a tag for it at some point. I don't know. It's a green plant. It grows. There's also some pothos and a bird's nest fern in here. The bird's nest fern has done extremely well underneath the heat lamp, surprisingly. I think there's enough distance and it's not heating up enough down below. Out of the two ferns that I started with in here, it's the only one still alive. The other one is a, a decrepit little husk. As far as cleanup crews that complete the bioactive setup, I've got tropical springtails, dwarf whites in here. Now, some things to make it easier to care for these guys. One, the automatic mister, using a thermostat with a with the timer function or even just using a smart plug or something like that to control your lights so that you don't have to really worry about turning them on and off. You can easily adjust them. This particular one is not on a smart plug like some of my other closures. This one's on a Reptazoo, but it does have the timer, the always on, and the thermostat control. The automatic mister, this one, I think I'm gonna eventually upgrade to a Mist King setup like what I have on my Veiled Chameleon. If you want a really nice bioactive setup with some active geckos in it that are very comical to watch that are an extremely curious species, they're not super skittish. You're not gonna be able to handle them really. You can stick your hand in there, they might jump on you, but they're not a species that I would bring out of the enclosure because they are very quick and they teleport. You can even see it when they move up the logs. They kind of skip forward like they're like they're lagging in a game where they just 
I don't recommend handling them, but if you want to set them up in an office or a place where you can view them, they are very relaxing to watch. They are extremely comical. They'll entertain you. They are probably one of the most fun species that I've got in here just to sit back and watch. If you want a small gecko you can handle, your adactylids are a good species for that. They're a bit calmer. They're a lot like a crested gecko. Another cool species. We'll talk about them another time. You guys have a good night and we'll see you again.